Alicia. Um, I'm the writer director of the short film Letha, and I have an MFA in film direction from the California Institute of the Arts, also called CalArts. Uh, the film, it's, through the length of the film, we're following a 22 year old domestic laborer um, as she navigates the spaces in an upper class home in Mumbai. Uh, domestic labor is a very common part of growing up in India. Um, especially most upper class, upper, to, upper middle class uh, homes have a lot of um, domestic laborers, which unfortunately in India, we still refer to them as servants. Um, it's a leftover of the colonial system. Um, usually these laborers are also um, most often than not belong to the lower caste. Um, so in many ways, the film is exploring how the domestic space functions as sort of a representation of class and caste divides um, in India. And for me personally, I think it's, um, it's an exploration of how our homes have relegated these humans to complete invisibility in some ways and the ways that architecture separates and divides so that we almost never see the help. And all of these people that, um, that surround all these spaces that we live in, but we never see. And everything we hear is the things that are happening around her and we're watching her engage with the space. And some of the, more, um, some of the important elements of the film is also language. Um, what she speaks is not what the house, what the members of the family speak. And currently in India, there is this big push to universe, universalize Hindi as the universal national language, um, which is such a shame because the country has so many languages and in many ways is another tool of oppression of the upper caste. Um, so in the film, you see a constant language switch um, where the members of the family can speak English, but when they speak to her, they speak Marathi. She doesn't understand English, so she could be in the room or the space and they could be talking about her, um, but there is this divide and it's linguistics that divides us. Um, in caste and class as well. I think it's many things. Uh, it's something that has, that I've observed growing up in my home in India for as long as I lived at home. And I've always wondered, um, watching cinema, the way that um, these characters or like servants or laborers that um, maintain home spaces are always relegated to the background or like whenever you do see them occur in Indian cinema most often they're not um, either their background characters or if they come up to the front or the lead of the film they tend to be involved in some sort of a scandal or it's a love affair with the boss but we're never allowed to actually watch them as leads or like watch them as their lives and it's something that's always bothered me um, and I think the moment that the film in some ways were, was born inside me was when I first watched Chantal Ackerman's Jean Dielman and that film there's something about it just it moved me a lot and what moved me the most was the ways in which she brings the invisible to the frame and how the if you really pay attention there are these little details inside the frame that reveals so much more about the character. Um, and in some ways, that idea of domesticity and invisibility sparked the film. Um, and that's sort of where it was born. Um, and I have since then, I think most of my work is obsessed with this idea of investigating the invisible and like what happens outside of the frame, what's happening in the frame that isn't action oriented, but is telling you all of these things about the people that may have occupied this space. For me personally, I, I see the film as a reenacted document and a lot of the writing process uh, happened when my co-writer and I, we went back home to my apartment building and for three months we just documented everything from, in fact, the opening scene of the film happened in my house and I was sitting on the couch um, and we just watched the whole thing happen and we would note take. And we would like, we had certain things we were looking for, like what were the sounds we could hear while we were watching things. And I think I had the sounds of the film very clearly in my head before I even knew what the scenes were going to be. Um, for example, the sound of the pressure cooker 
had been stuck in my head from before I even knew what the film was. And in so many ways in um, certain Gujarati, I'm Gujarati, which is a, um, it's a Gujarat is a state in India. And so my family originally comes from Gujarat. And usually you can tell what caste people belong to based. And those were sounds that I began to record and the and scenes flew sort of flowed out of those sounds. Um, so yeah, I think sound and observation were two of the key components of how we began to write the script. Um, it was very much a documentary process for me. <laughs> My uncle actually works in Bollywood uh, and he used to, not anymore, but very commercial Bollywood cinema. And I remember him telling me school is a waste of time. Um, and I think I was nervous to go to school but when I got there, I think I realized now the biggest gift of cinema education is your mentors um, and who and the people you get to interact with and how much they force you to critically engage with audiovisual material. Up until now, I think I had never realized, I had never been asked to look at a film and consider sound and image as two separate elements. And coming to school and having the time to critically question everything you hear and everything you see and sort of has in many ways shaped my understanding of cinema. And I truly, I think I was blessed to meet some really great mentors at CalArts who I think sparked this questioning, this idea of like, what is that line between fiction and documentary? What does it mean to construct cinema? And how much of that construction is then reconstructing me? Um, and I think that's the gift that school gives you is to also question yourself and question your own constructions and your own beliefs. And I think Lata was also born out of that. It was born out of a reconstruction of my own idea of who I thought I was and how I thought I engaged politically at home and questioning my own privilege and questioning my own um, implication in the systems that I'm critiquing and that was one of the main reasons we shot the film in my own home uh, with my family so as to sort of have the whole process from beginning to end constantly speak to one another and I think all of those things were born out of the ability to go to school to um, critically engage with everything and to question and not just let cinema wash over you or let visual and it's not just cinema it's, it's there's visuals all over the world Every minute of your existence, you're engaging with a visual object. And the gift of school was to have the time to deconstruct it.